Welcome to how to play 23 Skidoo on snare drum. This song is really tricky because the rhythms you're playing don't always line up with the macro beat of the 12-8 time, and that can throw a lot of people off. So I'm going to go through each section and show how it lines up with the macro beat, so that way you know where to keep time so that you can better play the rhythm. Now the first thing I'm going to start with, though, is that how we're going to learn this song is that you are going to cut your body in half. And what I mean by that is that your right hand and your left hand are obviously doing two different things. But if you cut your body in half and only focus on your right hand, your right hand never stops playing ever throughout this entire song. It always is playing on one, three, and five. Now it's playing different things on one, three, and five. It might be playing a rim shot. It might be playing on the rim. It might be playing on the, on the head but it is always playing on one, three, and five throughout the entire song, no matter what. This, your right hand, this right here, is your metronome throughout this entire song. And if you can get your right hand always on one, three, and five, then you can play this song a lot better. So, first things first, the first measure is everything is on the rim. And your left hand is gonna be doing the accents. So remember that your right hand is always on one, three, and five. And the first measure is gonna sound like this. That is why having a consistent right hand that is constantly on one, three, and five, and always being in time on one, three, and five will make learning this song a lot better. If you get rid of the left notes, again, you just have that one, three, and five, and your left hand is just filling in gaps between your right hand. And that makes learning this song a lot easier. You're not doing a complex rhythm, you're just doing a little fill pretty much. So in measure one, your left hand is playing on four and six, and it's also playing on 10. Those are just filling in gaps between your right hand. That's why you gotta get your right hand consistently on one, three, and five. In part B, you're switching from playing on the rim with both hands to now you're doing a cross stick with your left hand. You're doing the exact same rhythm. And again, all you're doing is you are simply playing one, three, and five on this, and this hand is just filling in gaps. If you don't know how to do a cross stick, in my McSalsa tutorial, I have a little section on how to do a cross stick if you don't know how to do that. On the last measure of part B, you are gonna have your right hand on one, three, and five, and then you're gonna get a rim shot, a left hand, and then again, it's just on one, three, and five the entire time. So you're gonna go rim shot, left, right, right, left. That little gap, you can, if you're having trouble getting that timing right, you can play it in the sky. So that way you're not actually hitting anything, but make sure you're not actually doing that when you're performing it. So the last measure of part B will sound like this. Part C is the easiest part of this entire song because you're not doing any weird accent patterns. The accents, in part C fall on one and three and they give it this really heavy backbeat kind of feel. So this is the easiest part of the song to play. And again, your right hand is never stopping, but it's going between hitting the head and hitting a rim shot. So I'm gonna play the first measure of part C before we get into the different endings. The last measure has the same rhythm as the last measure of B, but it's flipped now. So the ending of the last measure of B is now in the front, and the beginning of the last measure of B is now in the back. And it's going to sound something like this. And again, I keep reiterating this because this is how you play this song well, is your right hand has to be consistently in time and your left hand will follow. As long as you have a solid anchor of where to base all your timing off of, you will be able to play this song right. So the last measure of C is going to sound like this. The last measure of C in the second ending is the easiest measure of the entire song. And it's just triplets leading into B4. The tutorial wasn't exactly showing how to play the song as it was more showing 
how to figure out the timing of a complex song. In order to figure out the timing, you need to find a groundation point. If you can find a groundation point, you can base all the rhythms off of that. I repeatedly said in the tutorial that your right hand never stops. And the reason why I kept saying that is because your right hand is consistently in time over and over and over again. And that means that your left hand is just filling in the gaps. And once you can realize that, split your body in half, realize that your right hand never stops playing, you got that metronome in your right hand, that makes learning the song a lot easier. Because once you figure out the timing, then the rest of the rhythms kind of fall into place. They're not really that complex. It's what makes it what makes the song hard to learn and hard to play together is the fact that the timing it isn't always emphasizing the macro beat. So once you find that groundation point, then you can make learning songs a lot easier.